your microphone is on, so you can go ahead. Yes, sir. For the cholecystokinin and secretin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You said it's secreted by the duodenum. Duodenum, yeah. What about um, pancreas? Is it also the same secretion? You know, but pancreas is produced by the pan pancreas. also produce lipase, amylase, and stuff like that. Don't forget. Pancreas mm -hmm. produces amylase and lipase. And of course, sometimes too, proteases too are also part of the pancreas. Okay. But to be specific about the you don't know, we're referring to the kinins and all those stuff. Secretins, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, tyro tyrosine and tyroxine, they are two different Yes, amino acid. Acid derivative. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You are welcome. You are welcome. Hogla, today your microphone is on, so let me hear from you. Okay, please with the uh, dry heat sterilization part, I didn't get it. Okay. I think it's a question. Yes. Please. Yeah. So we're talking about what? Petri dishes and then pipette. And we said for that one, it needs high heat to kill the microorganisms. High heat to kill the microorganisms. And we're talking about high heat, then we're referring to what? The dry heat uh, sterilization. Petri dishes. And pipette. I don't know. Some of you have seen pipette before. Yes, pipette. In school, we normally see them. So to store them or to make sure that the microorganisms are not there or are sterilized or are killed, we have to heat it very well. And by heating, we are referring to what? Dry heat sterilization. And I'm saying it is basically used for metal instrument. Metal instrument. Syringes. Syringes. We can talk about the, the, the sterile petri dishes, the pipettes, fats, powders. When you talk about the fats and powders, I'm not talking about the one that you, you already know. There are some things called powders and, and fat. But I'm just letting you know the kind of uh, substances or things that actually need what? Dry heat sterilization or that high temperature levels. That high temperature levels. So that is what dry heat. And I'm saying that in uh, tendalization, we are referring to a process of sterilizing substances like food, like food, like food. But when these uh, food are, are resistant to heat, so food that are resistant to heat or microorganisms that are resistant to heat, we use the tendalization. Okay. But there are some food substances they are resistant to heat. So if you heat it, it doesn't microorganisms will not die. Then they are resistant. But they will need something with different. And that's called what? Standardization. Tendalize, tendalization. Then we have what we call the pasteurization. Pasteurization. And I think the pasteurization deals with packed and then non-packed food, such as milk or even fruit juice that are treated with mild heat, treated with mild heat, treated with mild heat. Sometimes some of you will go and then uh, 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 put some milk in your microwave or something like that. Some of these are all what, a process of what, pasteurization that we normally what, go to. That means you don't heat it above 100 degrees, but the heat is enough to kill it. The small thing is enough to kill it, something like that. So basically, that's what I just spoke, up, spoke about. I don't know if you, if you are still lost. I'm okay now. Thank you. Awesome. Awesome. Dr. Paul. Yes, sir. Yes. This, the second to the last question, please. Second to the last. Yes. This question. Is it this question, Dr. Paul? Paul, I want to be sure of your question. Is it the question? Sorry, the one before it. I thought you were hearing me, sorry. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay, okay. So we're talking about what? 
uh, hearing abnormalities. And we are sharing that if they, first of all, I've told you that the organ of corti is the receptor for hearing. The organ of corti, and this organ of corti is located in the cochlea. Cochlea is like around something in the ear. It's like around something in the ear. Okay, so that is the where the organ of corti is located. And if you look at the anatomy of the ear or the organ of corti and how it is structured, when there is a problem at the base. When there is a problem at the base, we normally lead to what high uh, abnormality in high frequencies. High frequencies will be impeded. That when the base is affected. And I'm saying the base is also close to the oval window or the round window. Uh, yeah, the oval window. Then. With low frequencies, we are talking about the apex or helicotrema. The apex or the helicotrema. That's when that place is affected, there will be low frequency uh, uh, disturbances or abnormalities. Then if the middle part is affected, then we are dealing with what? The middle frequency. Middle frequency. I don't know if you understand it now. Yes, thank you very much. Sir. Awesome. Please take note of it because... We will see similar questions in physiology okay. a lot. Yeah. Okay. All right. Problem. Yara. Sir. Yes. Um, so please, the um, the blood type. Say the fourth one. Type A B. Type four. Yeah. It's a universe, eh, a universal recipient, but no donor. Not donor, mm. because it contains antigens, but it has no antibodies. Okay. So it can only receive because it has no antibodies, so it can't react to anything. So it can only receive. Do you understand? Mm. Aha. Uh -huh. So it's a, it's, a, it's a universal recipient. They are very, very greedy people. So if you see anybody with blood group AB, just tell the person that you are greedy. But the most people that suffer the most are the blood group O. They can give to everybody, but, but they cannot receive from anyone, apart from themselves. Okay, sir. Thank yeah. you. You're welcome. You're welcome. They, they have too much pride. You say what? I said blood group O is prideful. I know, right? Hmm. All right, guys. So, this means so for blood group O, can you be either negative or positive? Of course. Right. Any, one, any one of them can be positive or negative. Any one of them can be positive or negative. And positive or negative due to the rhizos factor. But the common one is positive. Common okay. blood groups in terms of rhizos factor is positive. That means we evolve from monkeys. Because these rhizos are found in monkeys. So actually, if they insult you that you're a monkey, take it as, yes, you're a monkey. I'm not being a racist, but uh, technically, it means we are all monkeys. <laughs> all right. So all of them can be positive or negative. So if you're negative, mm, and especially if you're a woman, then we have to be careful because you can give birth to a child and the child might have a problem. Uh -huh. So... But everybody is positive. So if you're positive, you're okay. Is that okay now? All right. I assume we've all answered questions over here. So let's give ourselves some five minutes break. What kind of? Yeah. Problem? I'm listening. I'm listening. What kind of what? Yeah, what kind of problem? What kind of problem? Ah, that is if you have, if you are negative. Uh, oh, if you are negative, the problem that you can have is, uh, let's say you give birth to a child who is positive because your husband probably might be positive. So maybe the child could inherit the rhizos factor from the father. Okay. So when the father is positive and you, the mother, is negative and you give, a, you give birth to a child who is positive, for the first child, there will be no problem. Okay. But the subsequent child, 
that you're going to have, don't forget, because the child is positive, the child can uh, release, because of the cutting of the umbilical cord and stuff like that, the child's blood can mix with the mother's blood. And when it mixes with the mother's blood, that means you are indirectly introducing antigens into the mother's group. Sir, please, I didn't hear you. I'm saying that. I'm saying that. Can you hear me now? Yes. I'm saying that when a mother is negative and the father is positive mm -hmm. and the baby takes up the positive gene or the positive resource factor, okay? Yeah. What is happening now? What does that mean? It can produce what antigens, or it produces it has that antigen. Now, in rhizos negative, it means it has no antigen because it doesn't have that factor. So, mm -hmm. when you give birth, your first baby will be all right, mm -hmm. but your second baby might have a problem because in the first baby, when there was a cut, there could be a mixing of the mother's blood and the baby's blood together because you are cutting the umbilical cord and stuff like that. And when there's a blood mixing, it means that you, the mother that is not positive, you are going to get an antigen into yourself. But you have no mechanism to produce an antibody against it. So there will be what? So you, the mother, you'll be fine. But your baby will have the, your second baby will now have a problem because you, mother, you are negative, but you are having the, the antigen. So they'll begin to conflict because the baby will not try to understand, ah, is this my mother or not my mother? Because she's negative, but she's having positive mm -hmm. and the body is reacting. Cells are reacting. So they'll be what? Agglutination. There'll be destruction of red blood cells. So people with that, we normally give them, we call them anti-D. This anti-D is like sensitizing the mother that you mother or we are you are we are kind of uh reducing the sensitivity by the woman do you understand it mm -hmm. so that the body will not react when the baby is coming okay but is it that baby will start looking like monkey no no you no 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 you sound like a monkey nah that's not it okay. then 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 like we're all monkeys but we're not looking like monkey are we looking like monkey most of you guys are all positive. Um, yeah, yeah. About 99 are positive. Very few yeah. are negatives. I'm all positive. Aha. Uh -huh. Aha. Uh -huh. You see? You are positive. So, basically, that's just it. I don't know if I've answered your question, though. Yes, sir. Awesome. Awesome. So, you, you'll be donating, eh? But you can't receive. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Please, start making friends with those who are positive. So, so that when you're in trouble, you'll call them. If you're enjoying so it, call I, me. I'll just pray I, for you. I, I can, I can, <laughs> I can get married to anybody, right? Of course, of course. Even you come here, I'm single, so you can get married to me. <laughs> uh -huh. yeah. yeah. Oh, somebody is jealous. Oh, so please, the B. Uh huh. You said they can give to A and O, but not to themselves, right? Same yeah, as what? A. The AB. Yes, yes. No, not AB. What? B. B. No, the B. And B antigen. <laughs> yes, it has B antigen. So what it means that it can only receive from B. It can only receive from, from B, B, and it will give to A and O. Yeah, it can give to... No, it can't give... You can't give black group B to a person with black group A. It's not possible. But you can give, you, you can, no, I said, black group B will agglutinate, will agglutinate, meaning it will not accept, okay, anything from A or even AB. It wouldn't accept because they are not a black group type. So it will not accept from A and then O. Oh. Yes. I thought you said A. Mm -hmm. yeah. You said you thought I said A what? You said the B, like it has B antigen. That's for the blood group B. The yeah, blood group B has B antigen, yes. And it agglutinates with A, B. Yes. No, it will agglutinate with A and then O. Okay, okay, okay. A and B. It's agglutinate with A and then O. 
Do you understand it now? Yes, sir. Aha. Uh -huh. Very good. So that means that if you are black group B, you cannot donate to black group A and black group O, but you can obviously donate to somebody with black group AB. That's what it means. Mm -hmm. Do you get it now? Yes, I do. Awesome. Yara? Sir. Yes. Yes. Question. Yes. I think the last part one. Last part yes. one. This one, right? I think so. You think so? so. Twenty nine. Let me see. Come again. Okay. And um, yeah, could you go to that one? Okay. And say another one. I'm sure it's number 30. Oh, yeah. Is this one? Yeah, sir, maybe. So we are so. saying that lung ventilation in a person has increased. It's increased. So what is it? And they said, this is because of what? Physical activity. So they count, they are asking us what is the cause? Why is there too much increase of what? Lung ventilation in this person. What happened that there's too much increase? And we are saying that in physical activity, every lung or any part of the lung will try to what? Because the body is demanding more of what? Of air, more of oxygen. So the body, a compensatory mechanism to produce more volume of air to meet the what? The demand to meet the demand. That is why sometimes when you run, which I know you will not even try it because when you run, you, your, 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 your heart might even remove, your lungs might even remove from your heart. Laura, it might remove from your heart. So, Yara, when you run, see how you feel. You'll be panting. <gasps> yes. That's to tell you that your body is trying to what, increase the volume of what? Your respiration to meet the demands by the body. That's what we said. This, this is due to what? Respiratory volume. Increase in respiratory volume. Increase in the respiratory volume. So they are trying to compensate for the demand by the body. Do you get it now? Mm, see. Yes. Abi, now you know you can relate that you can't even run. You run 100 meters. I mean, through two, two meters, you are tired. Me, I'm um, going 400 this thing uh, with full vein. Hello? Yes, Lucy. Please, could you define total lung capacity? Total lung capacity is a measurement of all of them. All of them combined is the total. So this plus this plus this plus this is the total lung capacity. Because I was trying to understand why why would it be total lung capacity? We'd rather just choose a respiratory volume. No. Total lung capacity will be for normal volume in the for example when they combine normally when you combine your respiratory volume your inspiratory volume, I mean your respiratory reserve volume, your vital capacity, your expiratory reserve volume, when you combine all of these things, they give us the total lung capacity. They give us the mm -hmm. total lung capacity. So basically that is uh that is it if yeah basically okay thank you yeah mm -hmm. so uh what again uh yeah so who is next And again, to just let me add this one to it so I don't confuse you more. The total lung capacity, too, it has to do with uh, inspiration, okay? Whereby there is a maximum effort of inspiration. So when you breathe in, when you breathe in and they calculate all the volumes, that is also what the lung capacity or the total lung capacity. When you breathe in, and let's say you breathe in and they stop your nostrils and your mouth. They calculate. That is a lung capacity. Okay, Lucy. 
Yes, Doc, it's very clear now. Thank awesome. You. Please, um, when you were explaining about the aspect of radiation, conduction, all of that, yes, I understand, but could you like also uh, define what convection is? Because sometimes it's mixed up with, um, it, mix up, it mixes up sometimes with radiation. All right. So when we're talking about uh, convection, so first of all, you understand conduction and radiation, right? Yes. Radiation does not actually require any medium mm -hmm. for it to be passed. Okay. Now, uh, evaporation will require what? Or oh, that one, it is on the surface of your skin, so it begins to evaporate into the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. That is what convection. Then conduction, it requires a medium of, what? of exchange. Once it, just like uh, I used some examples some time ago about cooking. When you are cooking, at the beginning, you can hold the knots of your plate. I mean, of the whatever that you have, of the silver, then put it out of the silver. But at some point in time, whether the heat is being transferred from one part of the pot to the whole part of the pot. Do you understand me? And that is mm -hmm. called what? That concept called conduction, whereby you cannot feel it in your hands. Aha, uh -huh. you cannot feel it what, in your hands. So that can be called what, conduction. And again, we'll talk about convection. Convection. This refers to what? The heat transfer due to molecules movement. Or it deals with what? With fluids. Convection deals with fluids. For example, you're in your room, for instance, and you put on the fan, okay, and you open the windows. You know there's an exchange of, uh, of heat. It's like in a circle where the warm air in the room will begin to make space or make room for the cold air, perhaps, coming from the outside. That is called convection. That is called convection. I hope you are, that's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Aha. Uh -huh. That is called what, convection. So basically, you just have to know what they are talking about or what they are referring to. And you'll be good to go. No stress whatsoever. All right. Any other question again? No, no, no. That's okay. The all right. All right. All right. All right. Dr. Yima? I just I didn't really understand you about this. Sorry, which one? The one of capillary to cell. Okay, okay. All right. I will explain this better now. Now look at this. Let's assume this is our board. Let's assume this is our board, okay? Good. So now you have what? So uh -huh, let's even use this as, as uh, our capillaries. You know, capillaries, there are spaces between them. So this is a vessel wall. This is a vessel. Good. Now this is a vessel. And we met, or uh, if you've been following the lectures, tutorials, you realize that what controls or what holds water in this vessel are proteins. Proteins hold water in this vessel or in our vessels. Water is held together by these proteins. Or sodium. Sodium. Two plus sodium or sodium. Now, when you are injecting something intravenously into the vessel, it means that you are going to introduce more solute, like in the case of what they gave us. The case, the case of the, they were given what intravenous injection of albumin. Intravenous injection of albumin. And albumin is a protein. So when albumin comes here, it means that the oncotic pressure inside the vessel will increase. Now, this is what your interstitium or your intercellular cells. This is what intercellular or interstitium. Intercellular or interstitium, or interstitium. Interstitium cells. And this is your what? Your cells, your normal vessels. They are also what? Cells. Okay. So, 
Now, when there is too much of oncotic pressure here, it will draw water from the interstitium into this cell, which is a what? The blood vessel or the capillary. Is that one understood? Yima, is that one understood? Yes, yes. Good. Now, in any case, if they are doing injection of glucose and they inject the glucose intramuscularly, that means it's not inside the vessel, but intramus that means inside the interstitium, kind of. Okay? When they inject it over, as it is the interstitium. This is the interstitium. So they inject glucose here. What will happen? It means that uh, how do you call it? The concentration here or the solute here might be much greater than inside the cell. Than inside the cell. And if concentration here is greater, it means that fluid will move from this cell into the interstitium. It will move from the vessel, which is a cell, into the interstitium. So that's the other part. But if they mention intravenous, that means it's going straight into the vessel. That means concentration will increase. And water, will, and water will be absorbed. But if concentration is decreased, water will be lost. Do you get it now? Okay. Okay. So basically, but I hope you have understood the whole thing now. Yes. Great. Um, what you said for, for the um, um, muscle, you don't have to go directly to the capillary, right? No, no, no. We have to call subcutaneous injection, cutaneous uh, muscular injection, and we have intravenous injection. Intravenous means inside the vessel. Subcutaneous means under the skin. <laughs> and intramuscular means inside the muscles. And muscles forms part of the extracellular matrix. Do you get it now? Great. All right. Uh, AJ. Hello. AJ. Yeah. Um, How's it going? Uh, yes. Uh, it's okay. Great. Any question? Yeah. No. All right. All right. All right. Dr. Paul. Yes, teacher. Yes. There is a question there. I don't know the number again uh, oh, that talks about natriuretic hormone. Okay. Okay. Natriuretic hormone. Yeah. Natriuretic hormone. Natriuretic hormone means that let sodium go out let sodium now example of example is this one natriuretic means allow sodium to move out that's the meaning of natriuretic now or this one means that allow sodium to stay i repeat or this one means what allow sodium to stay natriuretic hormone means what allow sodium to go vasopressin is don't allow water to go. Uh -huh. Don't allow water to go. Odestron. Don't allow sodium to go. Keep sodium. Natriuretic. Allow sodium to go. Do you understand it now? So, look at this question. They said there is osmotic pressure. What it means is that Sodium could be high in this blood. Sodium could be high. And the question is, sorry, not really sodium, but osmolarity could be high. And of course, we can continue with what? Sodium. But the question is, first of all, it will result in higher secretion of the following hormone. It will result in higher secretion of the following hormone. Now, the normal concentration or osmotic pressure is 300. Now we are having 350. And they are saying, sorry, this is not uh, sodium. This is what? Plasma. The blood plasma. Then the content of the blood itself 
is 350. So this has got nothing to do with sodium. It has got nothing to do with sodium. Please take note. It has got nothing to do with what sodium, but rather it has got something to do with, with the solute. When we say solute, we're referring to the plasma cells. The plasma. The plasma. Great. So what will happen? So if there is too much of uh, solute inside the vessel, it means that uh, water will be retained. Water will be retained. When I say water will be retained, water will not be allowed to flow out. Because what? It has to withdraw water. Because concentration in the vessel is high, like we discussed earlier on. Concentration in the vessel is high. So water will be drawn into itself. And the hormone that can also help to make sure that water doesn't go out and water will stay would be what? The vasopressin or antidiuretic hormone or antidiuretic hormone. I don't know if I've answered your question, Dr. Paul. Yes, thank you very much. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Sarah. Yeah, good evening. Evening. Any question? No question. No, no question. Problem. No question. Good. But I hope everything is making sense now. Guys. Mm -hmm. Yaira. Sir. Yes. How is it going? Hi. Yeah. Any question for me tonight? So this question that there was heart rate increase, then blood pressure, then CNS, then you're like, Cox says it's a different answer. I didn't get wrong. Okay. I went to this one. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Great. We are saying that heart rate and blood pressure, all of them, they can be found in the medulla oblongata. A medulla oblongata is part of the brain stem. It's part of the brain stem. The brain stem. Do you understand me? And these are where the centers are located. So you're eating your heart rate, your breathing, all the centers are located in the medulla oblongata. So that means when there's a problem with the medulla oblongata, what will happen? There can be what? Increase in heart rate or even decrease in heart rate depending on the stimulation on the medulla. Okay? Depending on the stimulation of the medulla. But over here, they are saying that answer is what? Cerebral cortex. That's what I'm saying. I don't know if you've, if you've gotten what I'm trying to say. So this originally, the answer is supposed to be medulla oblongata. Yes. But in cork, but don't go for medulla oblongata. Go for cortex. cortex but in real life, life yes. Uh -huh. Go for the cortex one. Um, the yeah. part that you're saying, the, which one is for hearing, which one is for vision, superior? Superior. Superior is for... Mm. Uh, how do you call it? Yeah, could you go to that vision. question, please? Sure, 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 sure. This question. Right? Yes, yes, sir. Great. So we have what we call... Explaining. We have what we call quadrigeminal uh, bodies. These are four, or let's say, two pairs of uh, bodies that are found in the midbrain, or they are, you can see it in the midbrain, but I don't go into deep over all of those things. But the main thing is that these bodies are four, or there are four structures over there. And out of those four, two are located below, and two are located what? Superior or above. And we are saying that the one below is also known as what? Inferior or posterior. Inferior, like this one, for instance. Inferior or posterior. And it's responsible for hearing. Whilst the superior colliculi, sometimes they will say colliculi, or quadrigeminal bodies, superior quadrigeminal bodies, or quadrituberculous bodies, they all mean the same thing. And this is responsible for what? For hearing. 
for hearing. So if you see anterior or superior, it's the same thing. Or colloquial, superior colloquial, they all mean the same thing. So the upper one for vision, lower one for hearing. Does it make sense? Um, so, sir, what I understand is that the superior is for vision. Yes. The superior is for vision, sir. Yes. And the inferior is for the hearing. For hearing, yes. Okay. Yeah. But like I said, another name for the quadrigeminal bodies is quadri or, yeah, quadrituberculi. Tuberculi or, tu yeah, tuberculi. Or, Colicoli, that is C O L L I C U L I Colicoli 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 Aha uh -huh. the hypertensive glucose solution I the what? Hypertensive glucose solution. Yeah, that was what uh you might ask and I was trying to explain the hypertensive uh glucose solution that they were not specific about where it was, it was injected into like this one hypertensive glucose solution was introduced to a patient it will intensify water movement from where now glucose is also what a solute glucose is also what a solute glucose is also what a solute and after glucose they can easily what diffuse out of the cell Okay, they can easily diffuse out of the cell and enter into the intercellular what, liquid or intercellular membrane. So, if they are in the intercellular membrane, sorry, intercellular fluid, in other words, outside the cell, outside the cell, it means that if they are outside the cell, what does it mean? What it means is that concentration in the cell sorry, in the intercellular or interstitial fluid will be high. So it will draw more water from the cells. It will draw more water from the cells, which means that there will be movement of water from the cells to the intercellular liquid or interstitial fluid or interstitial liquid. Do you get me now? Yes, sir. Great. Thank you. You are welcome. It was we need to from internet. Hey, I'm hearing my voice. Oh, it's a video. Hello? I can hear me now. Who is talking? Ah, okay, Yuma. Yeah, yeah, I'm here. I'm listening. Yes, sir. Uh -huh, uh -huh. I was asking if it was hypotensive. Hypotensive, yes. Yeah. That's the opposite to be true. That would be from, inter from inter intercellular to the cell. cell. To the cell, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Ogla. Sir, um, yes. Please, the other name for a quadrigeminal plate. Another name for quadrigeminal. We have what we call colliculi. 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 Or quadrigeminal bodies, colliculi bodies, quadrigeminal bodies. Uh -huh. All of these things are all part. Or quadrotubular bodies or plate, tubular. Quadrotubular plate. Or quadrotubular, quadrotubular, yes, quadrotubular plate. Or quadrigeminal or colliculi. And I'm saying again, the upper part or the superior, also known as the anterior, is responsible for what? For vision, the inferior or the posterior one is responsible for what? For hearing. Okay. Thank you. Welcome. Any other one again? No, please. Okay. Uh, Lucy. Yeah. Yes. Shoot. Uh, no, she asked the question, but um, I didn't quite get the DC. You were a little bit fast on this one. Uh, the function again, please. I'm saying the superior, superior, a minute.
I'm saying that the superior. Yeah, yeah. You know me. I like drawing. Okay, so we have two plates like this. Okay, and we are saying this is superior. This is what inferior. Okay, the inf superior is for vision, whilst the inferior is for hearing. Do you get it? Mm -hmm. Good. Vision and then hearing. Another name for the inferior is posterior. Another name for the superior is anterior. Another name for this whole body, we call it colliculi bodies. Colliculi, 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 colliculi. Colliculi bodies. So you can have, if they say superior colliculi, they are referring to what? They are referring to this part, vision. When they say inferior colliculi, they are referring to what? Hearing. Or quadrigeminal, quadrigeminal, quadrigeminal. All of these things are all under names for it. Is it clear now? Yes, please. All right. Okay. Sarah. Yeah, yeah, good evening. Yes, evening. Any question for the night? No, no, not yet. Okay, okay, okay. Yaira? Sir, yes. this is the last question. The last question dealt with what? Uh, yes, we are seeing a histamine was overdose. Introduction of a big dose of histamine, histamine, and we are saying that histamine functions as a vasodilator and a bronchoconstrictor. Vasodilator and a bronchoconstrictor. That means it will constrict your bronchus, but it will dilate your vessels. Two different things. So, if it dilates your vessel, they can lead to what? Low BP. Because your vessels are dilated, the volume is open, it's enlarged, and the pressure there is low. So it can lead to what? Low arterial pressure. Low arterial pressure. So that's why we have dilatation of resistance re uh, vessels. When we say resistance vessels, these are the vessels that help us to give the, uh, the pressure. The pressure. Because the ability to, for, for blood to pass through it is what gives us the pressure. So if the resistance is low, that means easily blood is passing through the vessels. And that is why we're having low arterial pressure. Does it make sense now? Yes, sir. Awesome. 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 Yara? Sir, please. No question. Okay. Sir, so the very last one, you said it was the pathway of olfactory of factory of nerve. Of factory nerve. You said it was what? Pardon? You asked a question. The, so the, was what? Last, the last pathway you gave us, the olfactory receptor cells to the nerve, to the olfactory bulb, then track. Yes. You said that's the pathway of what? That's the pathway for the olfactory nerve. Mm -hmm. You said the olfactory nerve, that's the pathway. How you are, when you say the olfactory nerve, it refers to the, the smell. The smell in your nostrils. That is the olfactory pathway. So you're calling that how do you perceive things? So I was giving you the pathway to let you know that it doesn't pass through the thalamus before it gets to the brain. Do you understand me? Okay, sir. Yes. It doesn't pass through the thalamus to get to the brain. But you don't ask any question deeper than that, than what I've given you. So just know what I've just told you and then you'll be fine. So please, that question that you said, if we get it wrong, you you come and beat us. So uh -huh. Aha, so you are planning on getting it wrong. Yeah, yeah, so you are planning on, you are planning to get it wrong. So not if you if you explain to me. Okay. Uh it was about what input? What was it about? So it's about the AV notes and all. The yes, yes. Cute. Those questions, dear. No, 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 no. If you feel it, I'll personally beat you. So could you go to the question, please? That's what I'm going. I'm looking for it. Oh, I'll pass it. 
Uh, I'm, I'm it's not changing it. on my screen. Oh, really? Guys, is it changing on your screens? No. Hey. But I'm changing no. to I'm surprise. Oh, okay, I'm coming. I don't know why. Can you see what's on your screen now? Yes, yeah, this one. So now you can see, right? Yes. Great. Uh, Someone is going to explain this for me. Hogla. Yeah. Yes. Explain this question for us. Okay. Great. Um, please, you said uh, when uh, the heartbeat is from uh, 60 to 80 is for sino um, atrial node. Great. And from uh, 59 to 40 is for uh, atrioventricular. Good. And looking at the question here, mm -hmm. um, the question said... Um, the heart rate rose uh, up to 70 um, beats per minute. Yes. So you see it's in the 60 to um, 80, 80 range. So it's for sinoatrial node. Awesome. 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 So you get it. So if always look at the heart rate, if the heart rate is between 60 to 80, it's AC. It's between 40 to 59. You are thinking of the AV node. Okay. Then if it is... Between, um, let's say, 20 to 39, you are thinking of what? Of bundle of his. Then if it is less than, less than uh, 20, you are thinking of what? Pokinji fibers. You are thinking of Pokinji fibers. That's why I said any question under this thing, it shouldn't get you wrong. And again, all of these things, SA node, adrenaline, they are called what? The automaticity of the cell. That means they have the capability to generate impulses by themselves. But the atrium, the ventricle, do not have such conductivity or they don't have such power to generate impulse by themselves. They only conduct impulses from these, uh, how do you call it, generators. Do you, get, do you get what I'm saying, Yara? Yes, sir. But so you see here, you see that mm -hmm. the man, the old man with heart rate of 40. Yes. Look at it. Look at the question. Now. They said a cardiac electric stimulator, this is an, a device, okay, was implanted to a 75-year-old man with a heart rate of 40. That means that at that time, what was the heart rate? 40. Right? Oh, yeah, 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 let's talk. Yes, sir, please. It was 40. So, yes, which of the automaticity was it using? So, as in AV. AV, exactly. That means the AV was being utilized over here. That's why you got what 40. But the question is not about this 40. The question is okay. when the stimulator was implanted, after that, thereafter, the heart rate rose up to 70. The question is, the electric stimulator that helped the heart to now beat to 70, the question is, that electric stimulator has undertaken which of the following heart parts? So the question is not about the man before the stimulator. But he's talking about the stimulator. What is the rate of the stimulator? And which, uh, which of the heart is the stimulator assuming to function as? And from this question, it's assuming to function as what? As an SA node because it's able to beat at a rate of what? 70 beats per minute. Still lost? No, sir. I get it now. You get it now. Good. Yes, so, yes, just please, I don't get any question on this one. If I get any question on this one, I'll let you answer it for me. 
You taste? No. You know this? <laughs> I'm just looking for a fight. Me too, I'll fight you, pa. Um, Lucy. Yes, doctor. Yes, doctor. Let's go. Any question? No, sir. No, no, no sir. Question. Okay. AJ. Sam. Yes. Um, there was a question, Nana. The answer was B A is bracket um, three. We also sign as B A. What is B A? <laughs> yeah, it was our this flat group thing. Ah, the one we just did. Uh huh. The answer was B. This one. Nope. I swear it's nope. You know this question? It's not changed. Um, yep, 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 yep. Great. Yeah. I've already explained the black groups to you guys. So what I'm saying that there are some black groups, they cannot move together. Like me, I cannot do donate blood to somebody with blood group A. Okay. I cannot donate blood because I'm B plus. I am B plus. I am B plus. And I cannot donate blood to somebody with blood group A. At the same time, I can't donate blood to somebody with blood group O. However, I can donate to somebody with blood group what? Uh, AB. Uh -huh. And again, so assuming this is me, but this one, I'm negative. Not positive, but negative. Okay. So look at it. Let's now put in that context that I cannot donate to black group A and black group what? O. I can't donate to them. Do you agree on that one? Oh, can I hear you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they said it was established that agglutination of the recipient's blood Agglutination of the recipient's blood electrostat has been caused by the standard sera, sera, that is serum, from black group I and II. And black group I means black group O. Black group II means black group A. Do you understand me? So even before you go on, which of the black groups cannot donate to A, O, and A? It's black group B. Black group B. It's not going to be as simple as that. That's what they said. They said it results in what? Agglutination. It was established that agglutination of the recipient's blood erythrocyte had been caused by these blood groups. So now the serum from the blood group three as well as this thing hadn't provoked any agglutination. What it means is that when they gave it to somebody with blood group three, that is black group uh, B. There was no agglutination. No agglutination was found. This means that this blood is black group what? Three or black group B. And again, this is what anti rhizos serum. Anti means uh, no rhizos factor or rhizos negative. So the answer is what? B minus. As simple as that. Do you get it now? Mm. You are still lost. Mm, yeah. You are still lost. Okay, Sarah. Maybe you, you explain it better for us. Sarah. Sarah, can you hear me? Oh, Sarah is gone. Okay. Uh, Paul. Well, doctor. Yes. Can you help me with this one? Because it's not understanding me. So let me see how the anger that you both understand it from. 
Well, I understand it, but I don't just know how to explain it quite right. But to me, it's understandable because you what you were trying to tell us here is that there are some blood uh, people who cannot donate to to others, but some of them can actually. There are some in, in a group also that can receive from anybody, uh, yes. anybody, yes. right? Yes. So, but they cannot donate. Mm -hmm. So, and according to this one now, the you said there is no problem between the uh, the blood group I and uh, I I groups, but there is a little issue with the one with uh what's it called three and the uh, anti real serums mm -hmm. so which which was the reason why the agglutination did not take place here okay yes mm -hmm. so basically agglutination did not take place in the black group three because that is the black group so the black group cannot react against its own self but if you put black group three in black group O and black group, uh, how do you call it? Uh, a, a good nation might okay. A good nation might work okay. And that's why it's not advisable. That's why if you go to the hospital to do blood transfusion, we always try and check, we will check your blood group before. And I'm saying that in the black group, A can only donate to A and in AB. Finish. A can only donate to A and then AB. That is all. B can only donate to what B and then AB. That is all. So any other thing will be negative or it will be agglutination. Okay. And we are saying this uh, person, we are saying the person is B because there was a reaction in the O and, and, and A. So the association with A and O, that means the blood group is B because B can donate to B and B can donate to AB okay. without any problem. But with A and then O, there will be a problem. So you don't give it. Mm. Mm. Uh-huh. So always use that concept. If you use that concept, you understand this uh, blood group better without any stress. Because blood group is an easy question to answer. Just take your time, analyze the question, and that's all. If they say there's agglutination, that means that those black cannot be counted. If they say there's no agglutination, that means that's what you're so, you supposed to pick up. That's all. AJ, still, you're lost. Oh, uh, it's fine. Oh, are you just accepting it or it's fine? It's fine. Because there are so many questions, so I can ask you questions on it. If you don't answer it, I'll come, I'll come to you. Uh, so when we <laughs> go to the another question, like similar question, then we'll try to see that one. Too. No problem. That was wonderful. Yeah, maybe I, I will understand it better. better from there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think there's another question like that. Let me check. Oh, I thought it was a question like that too. Oh, it was in the previous. Okay, that was in the previous one. Okay. Okay, you let me hear those questions first before I move on. Uh, Lucy, have you spoken? Uh, yes, I've spoken now. Eh. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I've spoken. Okay. Yara has spoken already, right? Yara? Yes, sir. Please, okay. I have. Sarah? Okay. Sarah cannot be found. Sarah is enjoying Hello? Uh huh. Hey, so you are there? Uh, I thought maybe I just came from the restroom. Ah, so you left and went to the washroom? Mm -hmm. Sarah, I'm going to beat you. Please give me your room number. <laughs> Anyways, is there any question? That means you miss everything that we said. Mm, I finished before I left. Ha. Okay. 
Ok. Euh... Kwesi, Lord, any question? Yeah. Sure, shoot. Um, concerning the peristalsis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The GI tract. Yes. What are some of the things that can aid peristalsis of the GI tract? Apart from the brown bread, and then what do they mean by brown bread? Okay. Let me look for the question. Uh, it was at the last part, right? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, that means to do it at the end. This is a question, right? It's not okay. opening. Ah, it's not opening. Yeah. Okay, Can you guys yeah. see now? Yes. Great. Great. So, uh, there's an assisted year old patient present with weakened peristatic activity of the bowel. What full stop? Full stuff would stimulate peristasis most <clears throat> of all. So, first of all, you must understand that when we talk about peristasis, the ability of the bowel to move or to allow substance to, to move and stuff like that. And usually, the one that we normally need for the person to move are roughages. Do you understand me? They are what roughages, roughages. So roughages are what is needed for peristasis, most of all. Or first of all, roughages. That is sometimes we encourage people to take in uh, maybe mango and eat that. Uh, if you open it, not the seed, though, but the leaves. I mean, the mango itself, chew it, because those things are roughages. Uh, salad, they are like leaves, isn't it? If you chew them, they are like roughages. Oranges, if you chew them, not the skin of the orange, though, inside the orange. Before you go and take something that Baha said, you should go and eat a <laughs> whole orange. The inside of the orange, you can chew them. So chew them. All of these things helps in peristasis. All of these things helps in peristasis. Now, my main concern with the options here, that's the reason why we chose the brown bread. Because we know that bread in itself even causes constipation. Bread in itself can lead to what? Uh, constipation. So usually, brown bread is a little bit different from the normal, because most of us eat the white bread. And the white bread there, seriously, it will lead to constipation, serious one. However, if you eat all this brown, uh, brown bread, you eat uh, oatmeal and the roughage that I've just mentioned, all of these things can aid in peristasis. I don't know if I answered your question. Yes, please. Yes. All right. Great. Sir, please, can you explain peristalsis better? Like, define it. Peristasis is the ability of the GIT to move food, okay, from the upper part to the lower part. Let me put it that way. The ability of the GIT to move food or its content from the upper part to the lower part. So if you eat and there's no pressure, that means the food is not going down. And that's when people have constipation. That means they cannot even go to, excuse me for my word, they can't go to the toilet. Or when they go, they have to squeeze themselves. Or in she will say, I saw a chimney home. <laughs> Am I right, Ogla? I believe I've been doing that, Ogla. <laughs> Don't mind me. But that's just by the way. So they falsely or forcefully try to let the, uh, the byproduct come out. And that can even lead to hemorrhoid. Uh, hemorrhoid. Uh -huh, it can lead to hemorrhoid because your stomach is, is not moving. The bowel are not moving. They're just there. There are muscles they were supposed to move some substances down, but they're not moving. Uh-huh. 
I hope you, I hope you understand me now, doctor. Yes, yes. Okay, 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 okay.